ebbing away. The illness Minor. The unity that Alexander had imposed was shattered. His empire, once a symbol of his great military prowess and strategic genius, was now a patchwork of rival kingdoms. Alexander's dream of a unified empire where Greek and Eastern cultures would blend was left unfulfilled. His empire, as expansive and diverse as it was, could not withstand the centrifugal forces that pulled it apart after his death. His generals, once comrades, became competitors, each carving out a piece of the empire for themselves. Thus, Alexander's empire, as vast as it was, crumbled away. His death marked the end of an era, and the beginning of a new one, dominated by the rivalries and ambitions of his former generals. Genghis Khan, the man who built the largest contiguous land empire in history. How did his reign come to an end? Our tale begins in the year 1227, when the great Mongol leader Genghis Khan, known as Temujin in his early life, breathed his last. The circumstances of his death remain shrouded in mystery, with theories ranging from injuries sustained in battle to a fall from his horse. Yet what is clear is that his death marked a turning point for the Mongol Empire. In accordance with Mongol tradition, Genghis Khan's death was kept a secret to prevent any disruption in the functioning of the empire. He left behind an empire that extended from the Pacific Ocean to Eastern Europe, a testament to his military genius and strategic acumen. However, he also left behind a succession crisis. His empire was divided among his sons, who were not only expected to rule their individual territories, but also to maintain the unity of the Mongol Empire. This division of power led to internal conflicts, with each son vying for more control and territory. The unity that was the backbone of Genghis Khan's empire began to crumble. His eldest son, Yoshi, had predeceased him, leading to a power struggle between his remaining sons, his second son, Chagatai, was a competent leader but lacked the diplomatic skills to keep the empire united. The youngest, Tolui, was popular and effective, but his early death added fuel to the already burning fire of discord. The third son, Ogedai, was appointed the Great Khan. However, his rule was marked by heavy drinking, which eventually led to his death and further destabilized the empire. The subsequent Great Khans were unable to maintain the unity and strength of the empire, leading to its gradual decline. The Mongol Empire, which Genghis Khan painstakingly built, started to fragment. The division among his sons and their successors led to internal conflicts, weakening the empire from within. It was not an external force, but internal strife that led to the fall of the mighty Mongol Empire. Genghis Khan's empire, once stretching from the Pacific Ocean to Eastern Europe, slowly disintegrated. Julius Caesar, the man who turned the Roman Republic into the Roman Empire. But how did his reign end? Let's delve into the pages of history and unravel the proceedings of a fateful day in March, 44 years before the birth of Christ. Julius Caesar, a name that would forever echo in the annals of time, was at the height of his power. He had been declared dictator perpetuo, dictator in perpetuity, a title that didn't sit well with many of Rome's senators. A conspiracy started to brew in the shadows. Among the conspirators were Gaius Cassius Longinus and Marcus Junius Brutus. They believed that Caesar's rule was becoming too autocratic, threatening the Republic's democratic traditions. The plot to assassinate Caesar was hatched, a drastic measure they believed was necessary to save the Republic. On the Ides of March the 15th, Caesar was scheduled to attend a session of the Senate. Despite several warnings and omens, he made his way to the Theater of Pompeii where the Senate convened. As he took his seat, the conspirators surrounded him, brandishing their daggers. In a swift, orchestrated attack, they struck Caesar 23 times. The aftermath of Caesar's assassination was anything but the return to the Old Republic that the conspirators had envisioned. Instead, it plunged Rome into a series of civil wars. These tumultuous times witnessed the rise of Caesar's adopted heir, Octavian. He later became known as Augustus, the first emperor of Rome. The Roman Republic was no more, giving way to the Roman Empire. The irony is striking. 
the conspirators assassinated Caesar to prevent a monarchical rule, only to catalyze the transformation of the Republic into an empire. Julius Caesar's death became a turning point in history, marking the end of an era and the dawn of another. Caesar's death marked the end of the Roman Republic and the birth of the Roman Empire. Napoleon Bonaparte, a man who dominated Europe in the early 19th century. But how did his reign end? The thundering echo of cannon fire signaled the beginning of the end for Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo, in June of 1815. This was the final act of a man who had once held the continent in his grasp. Napoleon's forces clashed with the Allied armies of Britain, led by the Duke of Wellington and Prussia, under the command of Gebhard Leberecht von Blücher. Despite his strategic brilliance, Napoleon faced insurmountable odds. The Allied forces were superior in number, and the torrential rain the night before had turned the battlefield into a muddy quagmire, slowing down Napoleon's artillery and cavalry. By nightfall, the once invincible emperor of the French had suffered a crushing defeat. This marked the end of Napoleon's Hundred Days, a brief period of resurgence following his escape from exile on the island of Elba. After Waterloo, the Allies were not about to take any chances. They imprisoned Napoleon on the remote island of St. Helena, deep in the South Atlantic. Stripped of his power and isolated from the world he once commanded, Napoleon spent his final six years in exile. He lived in a damp and drafty house, his health steadily declining. Despite his predicament, he kept his mind active, dictating his memoirs and engaging in intellectual discourse with his small entourage of loyal followers. In May of 1821, Napoleon met his end, not on the battlefield, but in the confines of his lonely island prison. The cause of his death has been a topic of debate, with theories ranging from stomach cancer to arsenic poisoning. The once mighty conqueror was laid to rest in a modest tomb, far from the grandeur of his former empire. Napoleon's defeat marked the end of the Napoleonic era in Europe. His downfall serves as a stark reminder that even the mightiest can fall, that power is transient, and that history, in its relentless march, spares no one. The stories of these great conquerors remind us that even the mightiest can fall, Alexander's end, a mystery still unsolved, left a vast empire divided. Genghis Khan's demise was as swift as his rise, leaving a legacy of Mongolian dominance. The assassination of Julius Caesar marked the end of the Roman Republic, and Napoleon's downfall signaled the rise of British supremacy. Their stories continue to captivate us, reminding us of the transient nature of power and the enduring influence of great leaders.